Timber Kelly asks, what does a paper day consist of? So a paper day is um, something that we covered in the, the training, the, the presentation that we did last week. It's a day basically where you're not in the, you don't have any field uh, appointment set up. So you um, are gonna be doing phone work, right? You know, making sure that you're up to current on your emails and phone, your desk, as we call it. And you are going to be doing any corrections, right? It's a day, it's a kind of a catch up day a little bit. It's a little bit of a buffer day. So that, because if you, if you can't get stuff done the night before f for, you know, you're out in the field and then you're trying to like write claims up at night and then you're field the next day trying to write up at night. And you, you, if you don't have any breaks in there, that stuff can really re very quickly snowball if you're not able to get that stuff done that you did that, that day that night in the field. So you need a day to kind of like have as a buffer there so that you can get caught up on whatever, you know, do laundry, um, go to the grocery store, that kind of stuff. Also, um, having a day like that, because it's, you know, because you don't have any appointments on that day, if somebody needs to reschedule or you have a, you get rained out on Monday and your, your paper day is on Thursday, you can slide all your Monday appointments over to Thursday and then Monday becomes, that's your paper day, right? Everybody else stays where they're at, uh, but it's kind of like a, um, a buffer day. It's an admin day, you could call it call it the underwear adjust your day because you basically roll out of bed, get yourself a cup of coffee and jump on your laptop, right? And that's, and then you're in your hotel room all day long doing that. It's pretty important. No matter how much experience you have, you need to schedule paper days in. Brand new people, um, we, you know, the, the schedule that I put up for new people was once every three days. So, or the, if the fourth day, every fourth day is a paper day. Uh, Carl Browning says, I need the demo. And he's talking about the Xactimate demo. Um, you would, in order to take uh, fast track to deployment, you will need at least the demo of Xactimate. You don't have to pay for Xactimate to take uh, fast track. Need insurance as an adjuster, including E and O. Learn what you need for free at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. So Deacon asks, um, Matt, the area I have the most concern right now with now is writing the estimate to closing it out. How much of your course addresses this? So the way that the fast track uh, program works is that we basically cover the entire cycle, this entire like life cycle of the claim that's from that's going to be in like an uh, an independent adjusting firm's hands, right? So what happens is. And uh, not to get too much detail about it, there's a storm event in St. Louis. The American family says uh, there's going to be 10,000 claims and we're going to need some help with this. Uh, we don't have enough adjusters to, to be able to um, service our customers in a reasonable time period. So they bring in IAs, right? That's the, the whole point of what we do. When you get assigned the claim, you make contact, the full, the full cycle is basically this in a nutshell. They hand you claims, you start making contacts, you contact the homeowners and you set, you ask a few questions and you set appointments, right? And then you go and you inspect the, the loss. You go and look at the house and say, yep, you're, that tree definitely, you know, did the damage to your place and it broke the fascia, it smashed up the drip edge and that side of the roof and, you know, the, some sheathing and whatever else, right? broke that window, pulled the power mast off the side of the house, power was off, refrigerated food loss, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, you scope all that, right? <clears throat> so you, step one is you make contact, step two, you, you, you inspect the loss, determine coverage. Step three, you scope the damage, what's the extent of the damage, write all that stuff down on a piece of paper, please do not scope from your photos. If you do, do nothing else, or you've learned nothing else from me, let this be one of the things. Don't scope from your photos, right? As you're standing there looking at it. We got drywall, texture, paint, insulation. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at hagueeducation.com. Crown molding with paint right? Baseboard with paint. 
got everything. Yeah. Oh, wait, now we got a, a window frame or casing and a sill with paint, right? Write all that stuff down. Measure the window, right? Get the measurements of the room and everything. Don't go back and, and later on, like, look at your photos because you might, might have missed part of the room where there was other, more damage, right? You want to be looking at it and write it down on the piece of piece of paper because then later when you go back to estimate um, after you've scoped the damage right when you go to write your estimate you just take your scope sheet and if you're not using Xactimate mobile um, if you just wrote it down like I say um, then you pull up Xactimate and you're like okay first thing is drywall next thing is paint next thing is texture next thing is this and you just you just type it in instead of looking at your photos and like trying to figure out well what is it what is, is that I can't tell what that is. Is that a doorknob or is that a hairbrush? I can't tell. Or just write it down, right? So contact, inspect, scope the damage, write the estimate, and then you got to do, um, you have to document the loss, right? So you've taken photos while you're, in, in, while you're doing your inspection. So you have to label those photos. Those photos have to be in the right order. And then you have to fill out any narrative reports, any general loss reports, any activity diaries. Damage evaluations, underwriting reviews, um, statement of loss, claim summary, um, damage evaluation, did I say that already, in your invoice. Set reserves, all that stuff, right? And that's kind of like the admin, like the documentation part of the, of the claim. You've you're, you're, you're got an estimate, this is what we want to pay the homeowner, and here's my evidence for it. I've taken a bunch of pictures, this is the documentation, and here's where in the policy it says we can do it, so on and so forth, right? That's the claims process, and that's what we teach, right? In reality, these days, a lot of what's going to happen is, is that they may call you and say, hey, we need you to do photo and scope, right? Where you go and you, so you may not even set the appointment, but let's say you set the appointment, you show up at the house, you scope the, the damage, you inspect the house, you scope the damage, you write a scope sheet, and then you turn in your scope sheet or you have an app that is, has like a scoping functionality to it where you answer questions or you can fill it out or wh whatever it is right and then that gets sent you, and you're done right and you just submit and you get paid for that automatically through the app and then another person sitting in their underwear in denver colorado ping this thing pops up on in their machine it's in their queue for the work that they got to do today and they're going to write that they're going to write up that estimate from your scope that you wrote in Settle Assist or whatever app you're using, right? And then they're going to do the reports and they're going to, they're going to label your photos and they're going to do all this kind of stuff, right? Um, or it may be that you, they call you and they say, hey, we need you to do photo and scope and write, right? So you do all that stuff and you write the whole thing, everything up that you see that looks like it was damaged and then a desk adjuster, an underwear adjuster, a remote adjuster, um, it's going to look at the, the file, assess whether it's even covered or not, make a coverage decision and call the homeowner back. They may adjust your estimate, take things out or add things or whatever, depending on what the coverages are, and then they'll settle with the homeowner. We teach the whole process so that you can walk into any of those roles. Um, and it could be some kind of a hybrid of all those things. Um, they're trying different things these days. So instead of me trying to make like well here's a field uh, course and here's a desk course we just teach the whole claims process and then you just you know the whole process so you're able to walk into any of these roles and you if you if they send you on a on a remote desk thing where they're like all right well you just need to stay home and you know we'll just send you files and you can work on them you know how the field part's supposed to go and you know what's expected of a field adjuster and you know what the, the what that information that the photos and the scope sheet and all the stuff supposed to look like and it'll help you write a better estimate it covers it all it covers the whole thing including closing it out writing your invoice the whole nine yards get access to my professional network as a fast track certified grad and let's get your career started not in 90 days not in six months but right now to learn more and get signed up visit adjustertv.com certify